Hey guys, Mark from Gunplay Network, bringing you my review of the MSN, uh, MSM-07 Zagok. A uh, real great kit, and I bought this, like I said, about a year or so back from Side7 Exports, so check out the link in the description below. All right, I wanted to do slightly different on the intro here. It's gonna be a shorter review because the kit's pretty basic overall, but went for the blue light, swimming through the ocean, all stealthy, which is what it's meant for. Obviously, if you've got the mass production and you're not sharp, your uh, mobile suit will be kind of blending into the ocean-ish, uh, maybe space, maybe the ocean, whatever. Um, colors, it's darker, blue, purples, it'll blend in. So, checking it out. I didn't do the inner frame, unfortunately, but I looked at it and you saw in the photo in the unboxing, if you open up the, the it was pretty much it was just bare bones. It wasn't really worth looking at. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of armor or anything built around it like other real grades because it has the outer armor and it's very flexible. But as you can see here, the only thing I've done is I built it. I put a gloss coat down. I did a few panel lines, not a whole lot. I put on um, stickers. now. It was meant to say 07 and I had some spare water slides, Gillum's uh, Zaku I think it was, which is 28 his number and um, I decided well you know what I got some caution markings, Xeon, I got some logos and I'm just going to do that and then I put a flat coat down. So taking a look here, uh, it's a really good looking kit. It's very interesting, it's uh, like I say about those Xeon amphibious mobile suits, um, the vents look great. Uh, the cockpit opens, not to reveal very much because it's real great, it's so tiny you wouldn't be able to fit a pilot figure in there. Um, I messed up that decal on the right arm, but you know, I had to cut it down from a higher rank. So uh, on the head, got a few, got the missiles. Uh, what else? Yeah, um, it, there's not a whole lot of color correction to be done. The the I didn't do the joint ones because they flake off like terrible and I didn't want to paint, so I didn't bother. Um, it's just gray on the inner frame. If we take the head off here, just it kind of comes off in a big, big sectional piece there. Okay, so you can turn this here on the uh, if you can grab a screwdriver or knife blade or something. I don't know if I've got anything handy. Uh, I did paint the silver and the red you can see in there. I painted the little uh, that piece silver in just a Tamiya stainless silver or something enamel. And then the red piece over the top, I literally put it on a uh, skewer with a piece of blue tack and dipped it in my clear red and let it dry. So pretty basic there. That was nice and easy. You could use a Gundam marker or anything. Um, if I can tilt this up, it's kind of hard with gloves on too, sorry. Uh, yeah, this, this piece turns that way, but then you can also, if I can, and no, I've buggered that up completely. Um, the red piece is now coming out. Okay. So if you can see that, yeah, that's come out now. You've got the red piece. Uh, this silver piece rotates upwards as well. So, I mean, I don't know what kind of that would look because you'd be looking into the helmet, but it's nice. They give you kind of some articulation or artic articulation around the eye. So if I can put that back on. Um, like I said, it's just clear red with silver behind it. The, alternatively, you could paint that piece behind it, metallic red, I guess, and leave the clear, and then you'd be fine. But I wanted to go for full authenticity. Big words today while I was doing this. Um, so yeah, so you can push that uh, down and then fold it back down, and there you go. So it's like he's looking one way, looking another. So he's got that kind of Xeon, their whole mono eye thing where they scan side to side. So that was really cool. Uh, if we reattach the headpiece there, that's two pieces. The missiles come from underneath. Now, making so the way that is, you could actually easily paint those missiles orange, yellow, red, whatever you wanted. You know, I left them in the original color they came in. I just gloss coated and flat coated everything. Um, all right. So if we take a look around the waist, you can turn a fair whack and stuff. It's got those um, tubes on the back for the propellers. Uh, they turn a little too side to side so you can kind of change the angle he's swimming at if you wanted to put him in a swimming pose. I love those propeller vent things on the feet and the tank. A lot of detail in there. Overall, it's a pretty detailed kit, although there wasn't a lot of, like I said, panel lining to be done. So while well, I've got my little paint stick out, if I have a look in here um, without scratching, you can actually open up the cockpit. 
Now the cockpit re reveals just a little kind of seated area. Um, if you've got any 1144 figures, you want to donate one for the inside, you could probably like cut his legs off and glue them back on and sit him in there. All right, there we go. Uh, the vents, very cool, like I said. The arms, now the arms are awesome. I They're so, like the arms and legs are so flexible, kind of almost like an octopus is. Um, they can wave around in almost any direction. Good armor separation there. In saying that though, it was pretty painful. Oh, the backside of the armor slides in and out of the big gauntlets. Uh, those are the iron nail, I believe they're called. Now you get a three and a four. I've gone for the three because I like the look of it, but also the four was very loose. Um, the front skirt does move a little there. There's no back skirt to speak of. But yeah, the four iron nail thing was ridiculous. It just, it was so loose. Um, tossed those pieces out and just kept the three. The arms you get, uh, sorry, the legs, you get that sliding inner knee gimmick that we love seeing on real grades. Uh, the foot moves a fair whack. Um, the foot splits apart. There's separate toe vents in the front, which I had to glue in. Those inner purple pieces of the knee there, you could see I had to glue on with thin cement. They just fell off. They didn't attach at all. And yeah, overall, good posability. Here it is in kind of one pose, I guess you can pull off. It can kneel down um, like it's shooting missiles up or you're letting the pilot figure out if you want to attach like a little piece of fishing line with the pilot hanging out uh it's yeah that or it could um could be firing the head missiles i usually go into an accessories video here but there's not a whole lot of accessories to speak of you've got what you've got on the kit and you've got the pilot figure i didn't use the four nail because it was ridiculously loose on mine so i tossed those bits Comparisons, here's your real grade RX-78-2 Gundam I thought was appropriate considering in the original Gundam series, that's where we, I think we first see the Zagok. It's fighting the, the Gundam um, at Chabro. So yeah, you can see the Zagok is much physically bigger, but that's, you know, to be expected. We got the RG Zaku and that is the one I painted up. So they're in similar color schemes, but it's the Shah Zaku 2 um, real grade, the very second or third kit we got. Uh, and yeah, like you can just see the differences again. It's much, much bigger, bulkier. So if you like bulky mobile suits, get the Zagok. And just for a bigger 1-100, because I had it out, uh, it's the RE-100 Zaku 2, so big high grade-ish kind of kit. And you can see it's actually like up to the waist of the, so I guess on the real grade scale without hitting the new or the Sazabi, this is kind of like one of the bigger ones. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's highly detailed, it's highly flexible, it's, yeah, actually I really dig this kit. Yeah. Here's the pilot figure that I painted up. Uh, it's the generic one. So you just got your your generic pilot. This is not Shah. I just painted him up in some green, some uh, sky gray for the shoulders, gloves, boots, and backpack and helmet. And I used some blue for the visor. And that was it, yeah. Not too, not too hard to paint this one. Here it is in kind of an action pose. That action base adapter feels loose until you click it in correctly. It does feel like it's going to come off. I'm not sure I'll be posing this on an action base at any any particular time, but yeah, it does work. That's it, guys. There's not a whole lot to say. It is a bare bones kit, which is probably why it's on the cheaper side of real grades. Uh, even for a P Bandai one, it wasn't that expensive, but you don't get a lot. You get what you get, what you see here, and that's it. You got the pilot figure in the kit. Overall, I liked it. This is a real good real grade. I'm up to, that's like my 23rd or 24th real grade now as I work my way through. Probably one to buy. If you like real grades, if you like Xeon kits, get it. A couple of bits need to be glued, but that's expected of the, you know, the earlier real grades. So thanks for joining me. Let me know what you think below. If you've built it or not, leave a comment, a like, subscribe and keep building.